Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another tutorial and we are going to talk about an easier way for you to do some hand painted leopard print using some brand new vinyl that I got from Tech Wrap Craft. They sent me an amazing box of their bubble free chrome vinyl. So I'm also going to review and tell you a little bit about their product and how I was able to use it for today's tutorial. So of course everything will be listed and linked down below. Let's go ahead and get started on today's tutorial. All right, so we're gonna start with the vinyl and the goodies that I got from Tech Wrap Craft. So they sent me a bunch of items, um, most of which is their bubble free chrome vinyl that they wanted me to and asked that I test out. I have had a couple of um, different vinyls sent to me from Tech Wrap Craft and it is definitely a vinyl that I gravitate towards. And so they decided to send me their bubble free chrome vinyl. And for me, I'm always pretty skeptical when it comes to like a chrome or metallic vinyl, because I always find that no matter what you do with these kinds of vinyl is you always end up seeing those scratches, bubbles underneath, imperfections, wrinkling and things like that. So I was really interested to see how this all turned out. So these are all the colors that I got. I will list all of them down in the description box as well as tell you the ones that we use for today's video. So the first thing I'm doing today is I'm starting with a 32 ounce tapered tumbler. I've already spray painted this white. And we're going to be base painting our tumbler with a white base. So I'm just using Mod Podge as my adhesive for my glitter today. And we're going to be using Opal Daydream, which is a beautiful opal glitter from my Asia Creations. It's a very fine cut glitter to get this cover. So because I am using Mod Podge, I will end up going in and doing two coats of glitter on top of this to make sure that I cover up all of the spray paint and make sure that I get a really good coverage and coat of glitter for this part of the tutorial. So as I've mentioned, you don't have to use Mod Podge. There are plenty of other adhesives out there should you want to use something different for applying your glitter. I usually use epoxy method application, but usually for videos, I try and stick to using Mod Podge only because I know that sometimes the epoxy method glitter application is not easiest for people. And so I wanna also show some other ways that you can utilize Mod Podge and other different glues to certainly be able to adhere your glitter. So I'm just gonna go in and do my first pass of glitter here, making sure to get full coverage. I like to start with my top and bottom rim since that is typically where I see my Mod Podge start to pull away from first. And and then I'll go into the center section, making sure to cover the entire cup with glitter before I tap off any excess and sort of do that once over. Now that my first coat of glitter is on there, I do take my heat gun to speed up the process because I'm pretty impatient when it comes to glittering and I wanna be able to do my second coat of glitter. So before I've done my second coat, I'm gonna brush off any excess glitter that may still be on the tumbler that didn't stick. And then we're gonna go in and add our second coat of glitter on top of this. So your second coat of a Mod Podge might have to be a little bit thicker than the first coat. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're covering your entire tumbler with enough Mod Podge that's going to allow your second coat of glitter to stick. And so I always go a little bit heavier, probably not as heavy as I did with this one, just because I could not get the Mod Podge to come through the nozzle. I think I have some dried glue that's stuck in there. So I had to open it and ended up pulling way too much on. You don't need as much as I use for the second coat, but I definitely think that you need a little bit of a thicker coat for your second coat of glitter application if you're choosing to use Mod Podge as your adhesive. So again, going in with that second coat of Opal Daydream and making sure that I get full coverage all over my tumbler and that I don't leave any bare spots that are just glue sections and making sure that I have a nice even coat of glitter all the way around this cup. So this glitter is absolutely beautiful, a really beautiful glitter right all on its own. I definitely think that it is one of my top faves for opal glitter. So this is the look of that and we're going to go ahead and put this on the turner for two coats of epoxy before we go into this next step. So for this step in the process, I now have two full coats of epoxy over my glitter. I didn't bother spray sealing this because this is one single colored glitter. No reason to need to spray seal it, but I know that sometimes people like to spray seal their, their glitter tumblers, even if it's a single color, if they're going to be able, or if they're going to be doing multiple epoxy coats on different cups so they don't transfer the glitter from one cup to other cups. So after the two coats of 
epoxy has been applied to this cup. I've let them both dry and cure and now we're on to the sanding process here before we get into the whole point of this video which is showing you, showing you kind of an alternative way to doing hand painted leopard print incorporating vinyl without having it all be complete vinyl if that makes sense. So I'm going to go around with a 60 grit sanding block around the top and then take my Dremel tool to create that fine line of stainless steel before we're ready to be adding the vinyl to this. So what we're going to do now though is we're going to go ahead and hop over to Cricut Design Space and I'm going to show you the file that I'm using that's going to help me facilitate this hand painted leopard print look to give you a better idea of how you maybe can do this on your own. Okay, so in Cricut Design Space, I am looking for a file that I already know exists. It's called this layered fuzzy leopard print that I got from Bear Trend Digi Designs on Etsy. I absolutely love her leopard print files. They're definitely my top fave. I use her regular leopard print for every leopard print tutorial I need to do that's not going to be hand painted. So I absolutely love her files and definitely recommend you purchasing this file. So she has a bunch of different variations, but this is the layered leopard look. And so we're actually only going to, only going to be working with the bottom layer, which is that light brown look. And so what I've done is I've imported that. I've made this about 11 inches wide and I've just selected the bottom layer there because we are going to be creating an offset around this. So I wanted to create kind of an extra large leopard print look because I feel like if the leopard print is larger, you'll be able to see better as I go into the leopard print process and hand painting sort of the, you know, the outer edges, what would be normally black on the tumbler so that it makes a little bit more sense. It's a little bit closer to be able to see versus in what I've done in previous tutorials. So all I've done is I have taken that file that section of file and I have done the offset feature at 0 0.50 I want to say and I'll put that down in the description box as well and that is all I'm going to do. So right now I've just changed the colors and this is just going to give me a look as to what this is going to look like when it's all done even though I'm only printing the back portion. So I had to change my settings because I have a 12 by 12 mat. And of course, if you make it 12 inches, it doesn't allow you to do so. But what I do here after I'm ready to send this to be cut, I am cutting my tech wrap craft on just traditional vinyl settings. I'm not doing any harder pressure, nothing different, traditional cut settings for my vinyl and it cuts out flawlessly. So that is one thing that I noticed right off the back with this tech wrap craft bubble free chrome vinyl is that I didn't have to change the settings that I used in my Cricut, which typically you have to do with sort of more specialty vinyls, especially if you're using a metallic or chrome vinyl in other brands, you usually have to change it to a different setting on your Cricut or Silhouette in order to get it to cut through. So I'm going to quickly weed this and I will say that the weeding process of this was also extremely simple and easy and literally was a breeze and it took me no time whatsoever to get this completely weeded. And so now comes the part where we're going to take our cup which now is sanded. It's been cleaned off. It's nice and clean. And I'm just going to hand place these with my craft knife. You could use your um, transfer tape. You certainly don't have to do it this way. I just prefer and have always preferred when it comes to leopard print to hand place them this way for the most part, um, especially because I know I'm not going to need all of these spots that we're using here on this cup. I'll definitely have quite a few left over. So I don't want to do sections. I want to be able to control the spacing that I'm putting on my cup because I have to also envision that this is my base layer here. And this is what is going to be the bottom portion of our leopard print or the inner portion I should say because around this what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding that glittered you know outer leopard layer look and so I want to make sure that I'm keeping my spacing pretty even along the entire cup to really keep the true leopard print look that I'm going for. So after that is all applied in that quick speed session there I am going to kind of seal this vinyl. So with most metallic style or chrome style vinyls, you sometimes can get a little bit of sort of repelling of your epoxy. And so I wasn't sure if this was going to happen with this cup and I suppose I should have tested it, but I didn't want to take the chance. And I decided to go in with a little bit of polycrylic, which I like to use to seal these types of vinyls to make sure I don't get any issues in the epoxy process. So all I've done is let that dry for about 30 minutes. And now we're going to move into the star of the show, which is adding this hand painted leopard print look over this vinyl. 
So I have a purple paint that we're going to be using because the glitter color that we're using today is from my Asia Creations and it's called Moon Dust. It's a beautiful like three color mix of metallic glitters of like purple, blue, and pink. And it's literally the most breathtaking mix I've ever seen. It totally gives me galaxy vibes. So I've just mixed a little bit of paint and a little bit of Mod Podge to give me a tinted Mod Podge look. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a fine paintbrush and I'm literally creating the leopard print over my larger spots. So what I like about this is that there's, it makes it a little bit easier. So I know I've done a lot of tutorials where I have physically done the hand painted leopard look where I've done the inner portion and then I've done the outer portion. I've kind of walked you through this, but I know that doing the hand painted leopard print look can be really daunting for people and sometimes it's kind of overwhelming especially if you're not someone that you find to be very good at creating the leopard print look so this is a very quick and easy alternative way to be able to accomplish that look without having to do all of the hand painted so you have these intersections which literally are very random and randomly shaped and all you're having to do is create those parentheses shapes or those c shapes in a dots um, or covering the entire edge of that vinyl with your a little bit of this tinted Mod Podge, creating sort of the outer look of the leopard print. So for me, I find that if I had found a video like this when I had first started my journey in creating handmade leopard print, some of those cups that I sent out once upon a time that were just the craziest looking leopard print probably would have looked a heck of a lot better. <laughs> but what I do love is that you don't then have to stick to just doing a you know, a vinyl only leopard print look to get kind of the look that you're going for that you can still incorporate glitter in this almost hand painted leopard print look, but you're able to save yourself a little bit more time as well as maybe a little bit of, um, you know, struggling with getting all of your spots the way you want them to be because you've cut out the step of having to do your first layer of glit glitter, glitter and then doing your second layer of glitter in black or whatever color the actual leopard print spots will be on the outer edge. Um, because you're using vinyl in place. So alternatively, something I didn't mention is that I did not epoxy in between when I applied the vinyl and the polycrylic and the glitter. And that's just because for myself, I'm pretty confident in being able to create the outer edge of the leopard print. But another thing that you can do is that you can apply a layer of epoxy over your vinyl here. And then that would be an extra layer of protection, if you will, for when you go in with your hand painted spots around the edges of this vinyl. That way, in the event that maybe something starts to look wonky or doesn't look white, right? You easily could just wipe that off with a paper towel, wet paper towel because it's just Mod Podge and glitter, clean your cup and start the process over. So that's another way where you can kind of practice the, the hand painted leopard print look this way without having to commit or feel like you've screwed up and gone too far with the process and not be able to turn back if that makes sense. So, you guys will definitely have to let me know what you think about this kind of alternative way. I know that I always get a lot of like different comments in the comment section. Some people love hand painted leopard. Other people are like, I hate it. I only use vinyl. So I hope that the way that I'm showing you how to do this in this video is helpful to you and gives you an alternative way to do it that doesn't solely mean you have to use just vinyl in order to get the leopard print look. So definitely be sure to let me know that down in the comment section down below. I'm going to finish up this process here. And then of course, after I've gone around all of the spots and I have everything covered, I'm going to tap any excess glitter off here. And then what I do is I'm going to take a soft brush here. Any brush will do as long as it's soft and just start to brush off any of the excess glitter in between. So of course we have epoxy before we have this glitter and vinyl layer. So I'm really not worried about the glitter sticking. I'm easily able to brush that off with a soft bristle paintbrush in order to get all the excess glitter off altogether. So that is all I really needed to do. I'm really just taking my time and I would advise that you wait until your Mod Podge has dried after applying the glitter layer. That way you don't accidentally drag your brush into the Mod Podge glittered sections and then, you know, smudge a leopard print spot or whatever and then get a little bit of glitter that's kind of a little bit harder to get off in between those spots. If that, I hope that that makes sense. So 
definitely make sure that it dries and then go through with your paintbrush. That way you don't have to be as gentle and as precise as I am now going in between those spots to be able to brush off all that excess glitter. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and after I've done so, I will take this outside to spray seal it and that's to make sure that the glitter stays still and doesn't do any drifting or dragging when I go to add my next two coats of epoxy to make sure that all of my glitter and my leopard spots are sealed to the cup. Okay, so before getting into the decal, I wanted to show you the Tech Wrap Craft Vinyl. So this is the Iris Purple Vinyl that we're using for the decal. The color that I use for the spots on the actual leopard print file that we cut from Cricut Design Space, that was the Violet Purple. And so this is a little bit lighter. I decided to go with this one. But I wanted to show you something that I like to do when I get these big rolls of vinyl. So I don't really do well with having these huge rolls of vinyl in my space. I just... I don't have enough space and I really don't find it really conducive to what space I do have for my vinyl. So I typically put all of my vinyl in my vinyl, um, my vinyl drawers that I have on the other side of my space. So when I get large rolls like this that don't really stay great on the rolls, I never have any of those slap braces, of course, when I need them. So I just cut them into 12 by 12 sheets and then just use my paper cutter and literally put them in my either bins that are labeled for my metallic chrome vinyls or put them in my vinyl shelf to be able to use when I need. So on these vinyls too, another thing to remember is that this vinyl does always have that carrier sheet. So make sure you remove that protective film over top before you go to cut this on your Cricut. So now we're at our decals. And so we're using this Wild at Heart decal that I got from Creative Fabrica. I will link it down in the description box down below. And I didn't show you this in Cricut Design Space only because I literally didn't know right before right until I was getting ready to do final coats on this cup, what decal I was even going to do for this for this cup. So I found this decal and I just thought it was perfect. And so I really wanted to utilize this bubble free chrome vinyl in a layered look because that is typically when I see the most issue with my metallic or chrome vinyls is when I'm trying to layer. I always end up with air bubbles underneath. I have to relayer it multiple times. And then at that point it's either wrinkled or it's got a bubble so bad that just looks awful regardless of how many times I try and take it off and reapply it. It's just always a nightmare. So I really wanted to try out and see how we're, how layering worked with this vinyl. Um, and so I'm going to show you that now. So I've been using contact paper as my transfer tape for as of late. I know I'm really late to this and I feel like somebody told me when I first started that contact paper is perfect as a transfer tape and I didn't believe them until I was at the dollar store and realized that I was out of transfer tape and needed to grab something quick and so I picked up contact paper and I have to say this is some really sticky stuff and I cannot believe I have not used this clear contact paper until now for my transfer tape needs. Anyway, the more you know, I suppose. So I've just put that little bit of contact paper on top of the chrome vinyl. I also like that the backing to this vinyl is clear. It makes it so much easier to be able to line up my decals perfectly without having me to having to do my typical peel it off and stick it and hope for the best type of method. So this is also perfect because now I'm able to do that hinge method, which is just to remove one section, adhere that on top of that layered piece of vinyl, then lift up the other side, pull the rest of the backing off, and then use that squeegee tool to, again, a squeegee on the top half of the decal. So this went flawlessly together off the bat. So I absolutely love how quick and easy this was to do, and I didn't have to try and pull it up and redo it multiple times. So now we're going to go ahead and get this now that it's layered together onto the cup. So I don't notice any bubbles whatsoever when I went to apply this one on top of the other. And so I'm hoping for the exact same thing when I go to apply this onto my tumbler as well. So we're going to use the hinge method once again here, which is again, just taking off one section of the backing after I have it lined up securing that side with my hand to the cup. Then we're gonna go back to the anchored side, remove the backing off of that side, 
and then either with your hand or with your squeegee tool, just again, pushing from the inside to the outside all the way onto the cup. So I have to say that this Bubble Free Chrome Vinyl definitely stood up better than I expected. I do find that it's thinner than most metallic vinyl, and I think that worked in my favor. So all in all, definitely a product that I will be using again. So I hope that you guys really got a good look at how this vinyl works. I will have a discount code down in the description box if anybody wants to purchase this vinyl and try it out for themselves. And yeah, so I'm going to do one more coat of sealing before I do, of course, my two final coats of epoxy. And then that was it. So I did two final coats of epoxy, and this is the final look of the cup. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye!